Good morning. Welcome to worship this 24th Sunday after Pentecost. This is also All Saints Sunday. Uh, welcome to each of you who are here with us in person, as well as, as those who are joining us online. Uh, this is a communion Sunday, just like it is every Sunday here. Uh, if you have not yet received your communion kit, uh, please feel free to grab one from the back. And if you are at home, now might be a good time to gather your elements for communion. Special word of thanks to our musicians today, Janet Anderson, Jana Johnson, and Steve Glade. Our technology team, uh, we've got Patty Goak, Brenda Wright, Tim Wright, and Teresa Jones. And let's see here. Also want to take time to recognize our veterans uh, this day. Uh, how many, are there any veterans here in our congregation right now? We would invite you to stand. Let's give a round of applause for our veterans. Uh, veterans Day is on the 11th of November every year. And so as you're uh, thinking about what's going on this week, uh, we invite you to remember them as well on that day. Uh, there is table talk going on between services, um, and that's a time for uh, theological reflection and discussion on various things uh, that you guys might choose. Uh, let's see, we have a Bible study on Tuesdays at 1 o'clock in the Room of Hope, so if anyone is interested in that, uh, they are studying the book of Matthew. And it's really, really exciting because I know so, so many of you have been planning for this for so long. This coming Saturday is Ludafisk and Meatball Extravaganza Day, okay? So, I, I, I know that you guys were so excited. Um, that will be a drive up only. We have sold over half of the tickets and from what I understand, um, it gets to be nuts around here for Patty uh, as she's on the phone answering phone calls and, and uh, signing people up. I know we've had several phone calls already this morning um, where people have been signing up for tickets and there will be only be 200 available. Uh, and I will be sharing more during our mission minute. Uh, another fundraiser that we're doing uh, coming up is bidding for baskets. And you will see that in the narthex there are several baskets out there available uh, for, for bidding on. Uh, the auction will be on Monday evening, the 22nd. Uh, we invite you to bring them as soon as you can to put them out here so people can see what they're bidding on. And then um, we also are uh, awaiting uh, Advent, and that is our time of waiting as we're preparing ourselves for uh, Christmas. Advent starts this year on November 28th. And one of the things that we're doing, uh, we are making a change to our service time on Sunday mornings. We will be meeting at 9.30 a.m. We're gonna have one service in order to try to bring together a sense of community here in our congregation. And um, so uh, make, splitting the time, uh, going uh, instead of 8.30 or 10.30, we're going at 9.30 starting November 28th. We're also in need of four groups of people. Uh, they could be four families, or maybe it's a coffee group or whatever, that would be willing to uh, sign up for one of the weeks to be part of lighting the Advent candles. So if that is you um, and your family or your group, please let us know and we will get you signed up for one of the weeks. Um, any other announcements that any of you might have? Okay, uh, let's pause for uh, a video that we've got right now. Thank you. 
our opening song is for all the saints. Uh, it will be verses 1, 2, 4, 6, and 7. 1, 2, 4, 6, and 7. Beloved children of God, together we seek God's path for us and our faith community. May God's grace, mercy, and peace be with you all. We'll now sing Gathering.
Blessed be the one God, the sower, the seed, and the harvest. Our lifeboat, our treasure, our leaven. Blessed be God forever. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. God of heaven and earth, we name before you the sin that enslaves us, the sin that wounds us and others, the sin that scars our world. Forgive us and heal us. Guard us from all evil. Give to us the whole creation, the freedom of the children of God. Amen. We pause for a time of silence and reflection. There is joy in heaven over every sinner who repents. By the grace of God in Christ Jesus, who gave himself up for us all, your sins are forgiven and you are made free. Rejoice with one another. We are home in God's mercy now and forever. Amen. Remembering that in baptism we are made children of God, marked with the cross of Christ forever and set free to love one another, Please make the sign of the cross on your forehead. So I already mentioned Ludafisk, okay? I am so thankful to all of you for what you're doing, what you've done. Um, there are so many people that have stepped up and volunteered and I don't think I have ever seen so many spreadsheets on how to make something as I have with lutefisk and potatoes and meatballs and gravy. And um, I'm not sure that there is a difference between beef stock, beef broth, and beef consomme. Uh, if there is, someone can enlighten me. But those are some of the things that many, many of you have donated. Uh, cream of onion soup mix. I didn't even know that was a thing until... Uh, coming here, uh, or of course there was also the, the um, onion soup mix packets, which are things that you guys have donated as well. Uh, and this is a ministry that you guys carry out here, and I am so, so appreciative of that, because uh, the funding and stuff from this, when we invite people into the community, helps carry out the things that you guys are doing here at Living Waters, and the mission that's carried out uh, to reach, teach, and care as you share about your faith with others uh, within these walls and outside of these walls. And so thank you to all of you who have contributed in some way or another. And uh, don't forget to sign up to get your tickets. Uh, you don't have to do Lutefisk if you don't want to. There are meatballs too. And I think I was one of the fortunate people that uh, they shared the recipe with and I got to try them out and they're really good. So anyway, um, Please join us, and I hope to see many of you on Saturday. Oh, we do need some people to help out Saturday, too. So uh, maybe it's going to the cars, maybe it's uh, uh, putting stuff in the little containers, um, letting people in the kitchen know, take, running back and forth. If you can help with any of it, let us know. We're, we're glad to take your assistance. Thank you. This time I'd like to invite the children forward for a uh, brief children's sermon. So if you would come up and uh, we'll have you just sit right on the, sit right up here on the ledge. There, have a seat. And I'll sit down right here. This is a special day in the church year. You know, we have special days like Christmas and Easter and last Sunday was Reformation. Today is called All Saints. And one of the things that's going to happen later on in the service is you can have a chance to come up and you'll take a candle and we're going to light candles and we're going to put them in the sand right over here. And we light the candles as a way to remember people who have died, people who, have, who we love 
and who we care for, who we miss very dearly. And even though we light candles today, we still acknowledge, we still feel sadness in our hearts because they're no longer with us and we really like them and they were important people to us. But as we light this, these candles, we are reminded that these people were God's gift to us. Maybe they weren't along, around as long as we would like to have them be around, but they are God's gift to us and today we remember them and we thank God because God has used them to touch our lives, to teach us something about who God is and who Jesus is. And because of that, they are called saints. So when you light this candle today and remember somebody, a grandma or a grandpa, an aunt or an uncle or a family friend, a neighbor who has died in the past year or so, they are God's gift to you. God used them for you and today we celebrate that gift. Can you remember that? So light a candle, okay? Thanks for coming up, and we'll uh, continue our worship with the uh, song Ancient Words. From 1 Kings, the 19th chapter. Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah saying, so may the gods do to me and more also if I do not make your life like the life of one of them by this time tomorrow. Then he was afraid. He got up and fled for his life and came to Beersheba which belongs to Judah. He left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a solitary broom tree. He asked that he might die. It is enough. Now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the broom tree and fell asleep. Suddenly, an angel touched him and said to him, get up and eat. He looked, and there at his head was a cake baked on hot stones and a jar of water. He ate and drank and lay down again. The angel of the Lord came a second time, touched him, and said, get up and eat, otherwise the journey will be too much for you. He got up and ate and drank. Then he went in the strength of that food forty days and forty nights, to Horeb, the Mount of God. At that place, he came to a cave and spent the night there. Then the word of the Lord came to him saying, what are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts. For the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars and killed your prophets by the sword. I alone am left and they are seeking my life to take it away. He said, go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind, so strong that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. 
and after the fire, a sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Then there came a voice to him that said, what are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with a sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. Then the Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive, you shall anoint Hazael, the king over Aram. Also you shall anoint Jehu, the son of Nimshi, as king over Israel. And you shall anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat, of Abel, Mahola, as prophet in your place. Whoever escapes from the sword of Hazael, Jehu shall kill. And whoever escapes from the sword of Jehu, Elisha shall kill. Yet I will leave 7,000 in Israel, all the knees that have not bowed down to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. The Gospel according to John, the 12th chapter. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour. No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The Gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> a blessed All Saints Sunday to you. All Saints is one of those universal Christian celebrations that seeks to honor and to also remember the Christian saints, known and unknown. But this morning, I would like you to also consider the possibility that All Saints is a time for us to develop an aspiration a hope, a dream. I'm reminded of a little five-year-old girl who went to visit her grandpa on a Saturday afternoon. And toward the end of the afternoon, as they were getting ready to leave, grandpa said, Amy, I wish you could stay the night with me so that we could go to church tomorrow. And the little girl said, well, grandpa, why are you going to church tomorrow? Grandpa said, because it's All Saints Sunday. And the lady had a puzzled look on her face, and she said, but Grandpa, we're not saints. We're Lutheran. Well, Lutherans do celebrate All Saints. Actually, as refreshing as Amy's thought was, Lutherans, I think, are in the unique position to really appreciate what All Saints Sunday is all about. If I were to give a greeting to you this morning, it would go something like this. Good morning, saints. Good morning, sinners. Because that's what we are, saint and sinner. That's the organic complexity. That's the paradox of the Christian life. It's what the Apostle Paul and Martin Luther and all the other reformers focused in on when they said we are both at the same time, saint and sinner. In each of us, in me, saint and sinner is present and accounted for. In you, saint and sinner is present and accounted for. We are both. My mother-in-law's name was Alice. And Alice had a very unique and particular vocabulary at times. She would oftentimes say this, would you be a saint and bring me a cup of coffee? Good Norwegian guilt there, you know. Or, or would you be a saint and would you take this, these dishes to the kitchen for me? Well, when I was dating Jan, that seemed like a good opportunity for me to be a saint in her eyes. But that same sense 
continued even after 30 years of marriage. But is that all there is to being a saint, doing a, a good deed now and then, running a helpful errand? And I would suggest that there needs to be some deeper commitment, some, some greater impulse that is required of us if we are going to claim the title of saint. Real saints, biblically speaking, are slippery. Jesus bluntly identified the revealing qualities of true saints. He says they don't dress up like peacocks and strut around. They don't wear ornate jewelry, elegant robes. They do not insist in, on having the best of everything, the best place at the table, the best placement in the community or the best seats in the sanctuary. No, Jesus describes saints in the fifth chapter of the Gospel of Matthew in the terms of the words of the Beatitudes. Blessed are the poor, blessed are the meek, blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. From the perspective of Jesus, saints kind of slip in under the radar. And so maybe it's helpful if we have a working definition of a saint today. And I would like to share one possible working definition with you. That true saints, true saints, are those who live in this world being God's somebody. True saints are those who live in God, this world, being God's somebody. They are those who live without expectations. They're the ones that say, that's just what I do. It's the teacher, the Sunday school teacher, the caring neighbor. Those of you who gave and put together school supplies for the students at Pleasant View School this fall. Those are the people who have been touched by the amazing deeds of kindness of other people who are grateful and, and realize how that touched your life at a particular time. Saints are those who love without reservation. They bring supplies for the homeless served by the Lincoln Center. They help with Church of the Week at our neighboring parish and Catholic parish here in Sauk Rapids. They volunteer in our schools. They're the ones who give a coworker a break once in a while, who don't hold the grudge. They're the confirmants, the young people from this congregation who canvassed my neighborhood a couple of weeks ago, gathering food for the food shelf. And the four girls that came to my door were excited, excited to be part of that venture, excited to be part of Living Waters Lutheran Church, and excited to be able to say, we are here to help. People who give and love and sacrifice without ever wanting recognition or any kind of reimbursement, those are those who qualify as saints. People who become God's somebody to another human being, to another part of God's creation. Yes, today we remember the big saints, you know, the St. Paul's and the St. Augustine's and the St. Francis, the St. Teresa, those who are recognized by the capital C church. But I hope, and the reason we light candles and place them in that sand today is because we want to remember our local saints who aren't perfect, who are like us, but nonetheless have had an impact on our lives. The sainting process of the church on earth runs all potential saint candidates through a pretty rigorous program, almost to the point of being sanitized. Today, let's take some time and recognize the unsanitized saints of our lives, remembering that Peter, denied Jesus three times. Paul 
the saint, persecuted the church, laughed, cheered when Stephen was stoned. Augustine was a spoiled, promiscuous, rebellious youth. St. Thomas Aquinas was gluttonous and rude and abusive. I love to read the book of Hebrews, and particularly the 11th chapter, where the writer talks about that great cloud of witnesses that surround us. And I have a difficult time finding in those chapters, in those verses, members of the community of saints who aren't portrayed with some warts, with some foibles, some deficiencies. In some ways, the great by faith chapter of saints resembles a rogues gallery, not a hall of fame. Because every saint, every saint, comes first as a sinner. In fact, in the Old Testament, the faults and the foibles of the patriarchs are paraded. They're not hidden. We see saints in their underwear, and that's okay. Some of you probably played dress-up last weekend for Halloween. You put on masks and clothing and costumes as you went trick-or-treating from door to door or as you handed out candy or as you maybe chaperoned young people as they were going from door to door. On Halloween, we dress up in costumes and we put on masks to hide out, to conceal who we really are. Did you know that originally All Hallows' Eve, Halloween, the disguises worn were supposed to fool the demons, the forces of darkness that were roaming the planet on that fateful night. The idea was that good Christians could be left alone by these evil spirits if they dressed up to look like them, to look like part of Satan's army itself. Well, in the presence of God, we really do not have to dress up. We do not. If All Hallows' Eve is about masking, All Saints' Day is about unmasking, unmasking the saints. Because saints do not wear masks. They wear their hearts on their sleeves. They wear weariness and well-doing. They wear crowns of suffering. They anticipate being ridiculed. They do mess up. They bleed. They fail. Because saints always love. Today is the day the church should celebrate those saints that stand in our midst, that sit among us that have been part of our lives. Those people who keep the body of, the heart of the body of Christ beating, who keep the body of Christ warm and vital and alive for the whole world to see and for the whole world to be blessed by. Saints are those who live in this world being God's somebody in their everyday life. And so today, we celebrate. We cheer them on. And we lift up the saints and the angels in our midst. In fact, maybe we need to reframe in our own minds that image of a saint that we carry around with us. An image that can sometimes be cold, almost sterile. And see rather that parent who takes three or four extra kids home from an event because they simply can. It's what they do. Or the saint is that senior volunteer who gives time, time to a snarly teenager or a group of squirrely elementary students, the grocery store checker, who makes sure the eggs that you just bought aren't cracked before they send them home with you. 
or the driver who lets you go first in the congested four-way stop. Jesus said, those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. Saints are not those who exceed all the rest of us. They are those who most totally live the mandate of Jesus Christ. They demonstrate the sending power of the body of Christ into the rest of God's created world. Saints are those who live in this world being God's somebody. A true saint is not a non-sinner. A true saint is one who humbles themselves, serves others, and does not concern themselves about any kind of outcome. Today we sing, rise up, rise up, O saints of God. And as I light my candle, one of the people that I'm going to remember today is Alice. And to hear her saying, would you be a saint? And, but then I would add, would you be a saint? to be God's somebody today and every day. Amen. We sing our hymn of the day, Rise Up, O Saints of God. you will be invited to come forward and take one of these candles. They are in the basket here in front of the, uh, the sand box and light them remembering those people who have been instrumental in your life, those people who you miss today, those people who God has placed in your life as a gift to bless you and to walk with you in this pilgrimage on earth. You will light a candle from one of the candles that are lit in here. We had one of those holy failures at the first service today. Uh, we, had a, we had a candle all set up in here, and we tried to light it, and it lit for a little bit, and then it went out. And people started just lighting candles from the rest of the candles that were lit in here. And Pastor Ann said, wow, what a great image that is, because it is the light of others that lights our lives. And so that holy failure is going to become a holy precedent. Uh, we're going to do that this service. We're not going to have that candle that goes out. We're just going to start, we're just going to start off as the body of Christ, lighting each other's flame. Let us pray. We praise you, O God, for the faith and witness of those members of our congregation who have died. Today we remember Mac Matson, Jeff Melville, and those whom we name aloud and silently in our hearts. May God preserve their memory, comfort their families, 
Grant grace as we seek to live our lives to your glory. To you, O God, we give you thanks for Jesus, who bore our sins upon the cross and brought us from death to life. In your glorious name we pray, amen. And so please come forward. Practice social distancing to the extent that it is possible, uh, but light a candle and share this time uh, in meditation and thanks to God for what has already happened and what is yet to happen in our lives. I want to thank you for, on behalf of the leadership and members of this congregation, for your continued support of the ministries of Living Waters. And it is my hope that we will continue to be a vital, active part, not only in the lives of this community 
but in the life of the greater part of God's creation as we move forward into a new year. Please make, uh, please know that contributions can be made either directly here to the church or through direct deposit. Uh, whatever works best for you and whatever seems appropriate for you uh, in your life situation at this time. I invite you that to make confession of your faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Patty will lead us in the prayers for God's people. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, though we are both saints and sinners, you love us unconditionally, and you keep us safe from all evil, and you hold us firmly amid the changes of this world. We give you thanks for social ministries of the church around the world and here at Living Waters, and for every ministry that heals, lifts up, and empowers those who are poor, oppressed, abused, abandoned, or ignored. Build up your ministries and prosper all works of mercy. We pray for the safety of all who are hunting and also for the, the, their safe travels to and from. And when they are out in their deer stands, may they also enjoy the splendor of your creation and give thanks for that. We give you thanks for leaders who seek peace and all nations who lead efforts towards greater justice. Accompany all who suffer the wounds of war with veterans who carry battle scars from the past and all who promote peace today. We give thanks for all who called, who answered the call of their country to serve we praise you for plentiful harvests and generous hearts. Send needed resources and caring neighbors to all in need. We pray for refugees, orphans, widows, those unemployed and underemployed, those suffering abuse, those who use our food shelf, the people of Lincoln Center, the people of Madagascar, and all who are in need. Restore to health all who are sick in any way especially Sue, Kurt, and Chris. We give thanks for the saints of this congregation who have inspired, challenged, loved, and taught us today, are taught us. And today we remember Mackenzie Matson and Jeff Melville. Comfort all who grieve and lead us by their example until you gather us in your heavenly home. Be with everyone who is grieving today especially the families of Gary Thorsten, Sharon Henschel, and George and Alice Legary. It is our, with our certain faith that Jesus, who died on the cross and was raised from the dead, grant that through this mystery your servants, Gary, the father, Jennifer Thorsten, Sharon Henschel, the mother of Lucy Amundsen, and George and Alice Aguirre, the aunt and uncle of Jeff Jonke, who have gone to his, who have gone into their rest in Christ, and that they will share in the joy of the resurrection. God, our hope and strength, we entrust to you all for whom we pray, 
and guide our steps so that we can be somebody in our everyday lives to someone else. Remain with us always through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share that peace with one another. If you do not yet have a communion kit, I invite you to grab one now, or if you are uh, joining us online, uh, please gather your elements. We have all been given the free gift of God's love, and the Lord is the host of this meal, along with your doubts and your fears, your questioning, and a reminder, as we said, in, as we professed our faith, that we believe in the communion of saints, which includes all of us. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to peel back the first layer uh, to have access to your uh, wafer. the body of Christ given for you. And your juice. The blood of Christ shed for you. We'll now sing One Bread, One Body, verses 1 and 3.
Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. We come again to you, God, giving you thanks that in this feast of mercy, you have embraced us and healed us, making us one in the body of Christ. Go with us on our way. Equip us with wisdom to discern how we can best embrace others with mercy and healing. Amen. Receive the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We'll now join in our sending song. Yes, our sending song is about prayer and one of the greatest uh, assets, one of the greatest gifts that saints uh, are able to tap into is the gift of prayer. Uh, because we have a God who listens. So let's sing, God listens, listen to our children praying. and serve the Lord by being God to somebody. Go in peace, serve the Lord.
Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.